Should you buy the second edition of the Nike Air Max Impacts 4? For the price, I like them. Let's break them down. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be looking at different categories such as like cushion, traction, support, pretty much just all the performance aspects for this basketball shoe today. But before I get into that, we'll go ahead and look at some of the basic info first. So the Nike Air Max Impact 4 is going to get just that basic orange box. Nothing really too special there, but that's just because this is one of Nike's, you know, more affordable basketball shoes. Like that's what this Air Max Impact line is. So these are going to only retail for $90. That is going to line up with the Air Max Impact 3 from last year. I actually do have that on screen here with me today because the price isn't the only similar between these two models they really didn't switch up much between the threes to the fours this year you see that uh, you know from time to time in those budget-friendly lines like the Giannis Immortality 2 looks pretty much the exact same as the ones I'm sure they'll probably switch it up a little bit more next year but it's a pretty basic colorway too on the Air Max Impact 4 that's honestly not going to help the look so just doing kind of a quick rundown for the appearance from the side these are going to get that rise like in the front half of the shoe you're going to see that like little GT Jump logo there and then the same spike is also going to happen in the back but it's going to be in white and it kind of reminds me of the LeBron witness six like just for the setup they kind of had that same like shark fin look that's just like wing kind of rising off the midsole and the tongue is going to be slightly different though you do you had like some funky nike text last year but they did replace that with a nike swoosh and some air max text on the fours and i mean looking at the inner side of the upper these are going to have like the same type of design there but you can actually see that air max text kind of built into that white uh midsole spike like in that same spot and then on the heel that's going to be like the only spot on the shoe that has any color you're going to see some like racer blue show up like with that nike swoosh on the back but look Looking at these from the midsole or looking at the midsole, you're obviously going to see that famous Air Max units just kind of see, uh, see through through that portion. And I love whenever Nike makes them visible, like they did the same thing on the LeBron Witness 6. That's another spot that they kind of share that in common. But I mean, it's kind of clear Nike wasn't really going for looks on this model. Just not a ton of details on these. So now let's go ahead and see how they hold up on the court. So now checking out the materials and the performance side, we'll take a look at the cushioning first. The Nike Air Max Impact 4 has a max air unit in the heel that is meant to provide cushioning where it is needed. And then you also have some additional padding in the heel and the tongue to help add to a softer feel. And I mean, this is pretty much the exact same setup that was being used in the Air Max Impact 3. I mean, so far these look the same and they have the same features for cushioning. I mean, sometimes whenever you reuse the same stuff from a previous model, it doesn't always feel the same on the next shoe but it does here like and that's not necessarily a bad thing though whenever it comes to budget friendly models the Nike Air Max Impact line is like one of my favorites to review from last year and I know that the Air Max Impact 3 actually made my top five budget friendly shoes to hoop in from last year like from 2021 and they might make the list this year for the Air Max Impact 4 and those top five videos are going to be coming out soon guys so make sure you're keeping a look out look out I'll probably do like another top five of the year for 2022 I'll do like a top five lightest something like that let me know if you have any suggestions just feel free to throw that down there in the comments but the initial feeling on these is pretty soft still you know like i said you don't have a lot of actual cushioning tech built into the shoe these are pretty much like just rocking with those max air units so you can tell that a little bit on your foot just isn't going to be super stacked with a ton of different like units or foam you do feel that on the court but the foam in the midsole is actually giving a pretty soft reading whenever we used our durometer like for the air max impact 4 these were showing a 33.5 that's a little bit softer than average but still these are going to fall on the more average side for cushioning in general but i like how they play for the price now looking at more of the materials and the support, we've come to yet another section where, I mean, the Air Max Impact 4 is going to pretty much be a copy paste from the design of the Air Max Impact 3. The upper is going to be semi-transparent, not enough to where you can actually see your sock though. I was a little bit nervous like initially about that just because I don't really like that on basketball shoes, but the entire upper is going to be made out of this lightweight mesh and that's definitely, it's definitely going to be a light shoe to hoop in. The Air Max Impact 4 only weighs 376 grams for a size 10 and a half. That is way lower than your average basketball shoe would weigh and that's even down like 15, 20 grams, something like that, than the Air Max Impact 3 from last year. So, I mean, that's definitely something you notice immediately. These are just super light to move around in on the court. And that's definitely like, and the mesh is definitely thin, which does have potential to like kind of hurt the support. But there are some pieces on here that do a good job to help with that. So first, I mean, I whenever shoes give you like that little extra protection on the toe for like people that toe drag, I always love that. Like the Air Max Impact 4 has this protective overlay or like this, just this casing to add to the durability of the shoe. So that's like just the for like for the starters and then in the forefoot you're going to have that black sculpted wing that we've talked about it's going to come up from the midsole and that's just going to help keep your foot from like sliding outside of the footbed and you're going to have the same idea on the back of the shoe with that white wing that's kind of running up the heel and that's going to provide a really solid heel counter like just to help any help eliminate any movement back there and there's a forefoot underlay like just to go along with all that to add stability so it's not like the support is going to be like the highlight of this model i wouldn't say that because it still is a little bit thin but on a shoe this light support still holds up nice which is you know which you want. 
Finishing it off with the traction, these get a herringbone traction pattern on the outsole that is there to help you control your movement and help you hold your ground. There's also some diamond shaped cutouts to expose the foam to help reduce the weight. So I mean, we made it this far, there's no reason to switch it up now. The Nike Air Max Impact 4 has an identical traction pattern to the Nike Air Max Impact 3. So not a lot of changes this year between these models, like definitely more differences between the Air Max Impact 2 to the 3s. So maybe we'll just try again next year, but feel free to not switch up the traction. These play really nice. Like you have some noticeable like bite for a cheaper shoe. And I have kind of noticed that trend though. Like sometimes these budget friendly models, like they won't be the most comfortable. They might not have a lot of support, but the traction is usually pretty nice or at least durable. And this is going to be a squeaky model. Like you can hear them making some noise whenever we did our squeak test. And that just kind of reiterates how these play. And the grooves are like pretty deep too, which will, I mean, really help if you want to play outside in these. But to finish off with sizing, I did go true to sizing. I mean, you have a little bit of room left over at the end. It's going to be more of like a standard fit for like, for, as for the width though. And I wouldn't say it's going to be like wider, narrow, just overall for the feel. But overall for the shoe, I mean, Nike didn't make a lot of groundbreaking changes between this model. They switched up the tongue, slapped a new label on it, called it the Air Max Impact 4 and bang whole new shoe, but I'm sure they'll play with it a little bit more next year. But as far as performance goes, just strictly performance, this is actually a really well-rounded shoe. Like the cushion is a, is the cushion is gonna be average, but it's gonna be above average for the price, honestly. And the support, it isn't set up to be great with the thinner upper, but it still plays well. And especially thanks to those wings and the traction is super nice too. Like this would be a perfect model to hoop in outdoors. They would work indoors too. So at $90, should you buy the Nike Air Max Impact 4? I'd say so. Thank you guys for taking some time to watch. Feel free to throw us a follow or a sub if you like this video. And if you're interested in buying the Nike Air Max Impact 4 and you want to support our channel, just click the link here on screen or we have links down below or in our bio. So feel free to check that out. But until next review, I'm Landon from Shoewear. Peace.